Welcome back, everybody. Happy Wednesday, and welcome to episode 15 of Beyond the Podium. I got I got David here. <laughs> I got Kaylee here. <laughs> David, tell everybody what we're up to this week. Well, right now we are in the hotel uh, in uh, outside of Rochester. Well, you know, we say it's Rochester. We're really not in Rochester, but um, we're in Honeyoy Falls. Uh, at Rochester Brooks Gun Club, and we are setting targets. Um, well, I'm setting targets, and you're watching Cannoli, the dog. <laughs> he's, ch- he's retrieving all the targets you yeah. set. I bet he's retrieved 40 targets today. Yeah, he did good. But anyways, we're setting targets for the New York State Championship uh, going on this weekend, and uh, this has been really fun. I wanted to. Uh, I, I want to start off with this and one other thing, um, and then we're going to get into what our the main topic of the podcast is, which uh, for tonight, which I'll let Kaylee introduce later. But um, this has been really fun. Rochester Brooks is a place that I teach at on a regular basis. It's a beautiful club. It's a beautiful area, the country. I have a lot of students here. A lot of you guys that listen to the podcast are here. And uh, so it's a really interesting, a unique opportunity to set targets at what I consider kind of really to be kind of like a home club for me uh, and then teach on them afterwards. So um, I just wanted to mention that and, and say that if anybody's listening to this and you're able to make it up to New York this weekend on last minute notice uh, and you want something to do, come shoot the New York State shoot. Come um, on down. Yeah. Or my, up, I guess. Up or down or over. Or sideways whatever. all around. But uh, myself and Scott and Roger uh, are, are working really hard to set some really fun targets. We've got a really cool course, uh, and the rest of the guys at uh, Rochester Brooks are, are just a cool place. It's a member-run uh, club, and it's just cool to see everybody that comes here to shoot and enjoy the place, pitch in to help to put on a good tournament uh, for the state. So... With that being said, I I just found out some really sad news today, and I couldn't um, I couldn't not bring it up because uh, he's he's a really good friend. But um, uh, I just found out today that uh, a, basically a legend in in sporting clays passed away this morning from COVID. Uh, his name is Chuck Frazier, and I wanted to just. Um, uh, you know, put the put the word out there, and uh, and uh, you know, kind of like a heartfelt um, message out there, and, and kind of just tell a little short story about Chuck, um, because for those of you who don't know who Chuck Frazier is, really we might not have sporting clays in the United States if it wasn't for Chuck Frazier. Um, Chuck is the is the hardest working person I've ever met in my life. Um, to the day that he died, he would run around and, you know, he, I mean, basically would travel the country to put on tournaments. I guarantee probably everybody listening to this podcast right now and in the future has shot Chuck's targets once, um, at least. And he was a guy that taught me how to set targets. Um, but apart from that, he ran a bunch of really good gun clubs. He started a lot of good gun clubs. He taught a lot of great target setters now how to set targets. Um, and there's just so much more about Chuck Frazier. I Honestly, he was a guy that I wanted to have on the podcast uh, in the future. And I'm sorry that we're not going to be able to do that. So if any of you guys know him or his family... Um, reach out and uh, and let them know that uh, they're in your your thoughts and prayers. Uh, but I'll leave it at that, and we can get into the podcast because uh, enough with the sadness. This has already been a sad enough time. Let's have some fun. <laughs> Agreed. <laughs> yes. So going into the New York State shoot, is that what it's called? Yes. Like this is New York State Championship. Okay. Um, I have a question for you. Yes. I know you're not shooting the shoot because you're setting targets that this That would week. be very unethical. So my question is, have you ever shot yes. not to lose? Oh, yeah. Everybody has. Uh, yeah? Yeah. 
So you've shot not to lose. I have. Versus, as I just said. <laughs> versus shooting to win. Yes. What do you think the difference is there? Well, it's a huge difference. It's a difference between playing offense and defense. Can you elaborate a little more? Um, yeah, I mean, shooting not to lose. It, you've said this phrase more than I have, but it has to do with a lot of fear-based thoughts. Um, shooting, shooting to win is, holy cow. I mean, talk about wanting to get philosophical if, if you have the opportunity, but the difference between the two is, uh, massive, not just a mindset thing, but an approach thing in itself. It's a strategy choice difference. Um, if I'm shooting to win versus shooting not to lose, it's, it, it, you know, um, I would say taking that phrase in, um, in a negative way, uh, shooting not to lose is going to be something that more or less creeps up on you that you don't really realize that you're doing until it's a little bit too late. Um, whereas shooting to win is definitely something that's more of a conscious choice in terms of a mindset and approach to the game, uh, at least in my game. Uh, in terms of what I'm doing, if I, if I realize that I'm shooting not to lose, um, I'm, like I said, I'm playing defense. I'm taking things safe. I'm making slower moves. I'm not necessarily going for the, um, for the, you know, all out shots where, you know, take for example, I get a pair at a station and, I have the opportunity to, you know, strategy wise, there's a way to take the pair where I can, I'm either going, if I do it a specific way, I'm either going to drop three or hit them all. Uh, and then there's another strategy choice I can make where I'm probably going to miss one, but definitely hit a, a, a five or a seven, depending on how many birds there are uh, at the station. Shooting defensively would be kind of taking the easy way out shooting offensively would be kind of putting it at risk um can you think of a specific shoot that you shot on defense you were shooting not to lose like can you think back out of a time at a shoot where either maybe you were in the lead and the last day you kind of blew it or lost it a little bit because you were kind of playing defense i can think of a shoot where I can tell you a good story about Wendell and I in a world championship about shooting not to lose. Okay. So this was probably, let me see, eight, seven, eight, nine, probably the 2009 world championship in San Antonio. It was either 2009 or 2010, whatever one was in San Antonio, I don't remember. But um, there was a true pair of teal targets and they were not incoming teal they were outgoing teal Ooh. hard it was a hard it was a hard pair really hard pair and it just happened to be the last station of the day mm -hmm. and i believe it was saturday so kind of like you know moving day in yeah. golf and so wendell and i were shooting on the same squad and both of us had good rounds going and we, I think we, I at least knew the scores going into our round and we were shooting the last rotation on Saturday. And I knew that if I ran the station that I think I was going to have a top three score going into Sunday for the world championship. I don't remember what Wendell had, but he was shooting just as good. Um, and so we're sitting there talking and I, it was obvious that there were two ways to shoot this pair. You could take both birds on the way up, uh, or you could take one bird on the way up, one bird on the way down. Mm -hmm. And we're, we're both sitting there th talking about it because no normally we make all these decisions by ourselves, okay, like in our heads. But this was a tough pair and we're in a good situation. So we're kind of bouncing ideas off each other. And, I said, what way are you going to take it? And Wendell goes, I'm not sure what way are you going to take it? 
And I said, I, I have no idea. And he goes, well... Did you have an idea and you just didn't want to tell it? or No, I really didn't have no. an idea. I was also playing with, do I want left bird first, right bird first? Do I want, you know, I had, I literally had no idea. Both on the way up, at the top, at the apex, on the way down, both on the way down. I don't have any idea. Um, and Wendell goes, well, there's, there's two, there's two approaches you can take. You can, uh, you can, I forget the phrase that he used, but I remember thinking it was funny at the time. It was something about like, well, you can either, uh, you know, like blow your blow your score up on this round or you can finish with a really good score by taking them both on the way up meaning that you know that is the way to shoot an eight but it's also a potential way to shoot a three <laughs> and <laughs> comforting <laughs> <laughs> right um and, th and then you know or you could take them dropping and it was a safer way to play it but probably not going to hit all eight mm -hmm. but you're definitely not going to hit just three mm -hmm. um and so we both decided we were like you know what let's stick with the right mindset here and let's kind of let's just go big or go home and we both ended up going home <laughs> <laughs> so it didn't work out you did shot not, a three did not work out <laughs> I think I dropped four birds and went to drop four. I don't know. It was bad. But we, we decided both to try to shoot it on the way up. And uh, I, I tell that story because it's not, I mean, we, we consciously made the choice of shooting to win. Mm -hmm. But I think what forced we us. We weren't really shooting. We weren't. Win. We made the strategy choice to win. Yeah. Right? We, we made the choice that allowed us to potentially we have the eight. scared of that choice. Exactly. It was, a, it was a pair that scared both of us, I think. And we, we ended up not doing well. You know, that's a kind of shot to a true pair of teal on the way up. That's a pair that you, you really have to trust. And if you hang on to that shot visually or mechanically for any moment of time, you're going to miss. What scared you about that pair? Was it the actual pair or was it what was on the line? And that it was you had to end on a hard pair. Well, the interesting thing about about teal birds, um, especially these, is that it's the it's really about the only style of bird that you're going to shoot where it's invisible if you're shooting on the way up because of occlusion. Right, so the bird is underneath your gun, mm -hmm. and you're you're definitely not going to have a, a teal on the way up that you're shooting where the bird is above your gun. Because if you do, it's going to be unless a miss. you shoot them like I do, <laughs> which is right. get beat and then play catch up. Yeah, exactly. So, um, what's scary about it is it, it, it is that if you're sitting in a position to where you potentially have, you know, a score you need to win the world championship. And you got a true pair of birds that both birds are going to be shooting with your non-dominant eye, mm -hmm. looking through the gun. You have to be trusting of that shot to make it. And most people aren't. Most people want to see at least, you know, even put, let me frame it this way to you. You, you know, you're going to want to see the bird when you pull the trigger. Right. Okay. Well, to see the bird the clearest when you pull the trigger, it's got to be over your gun. So a lot of times people like that are not that good at that shot they hang on just a moment too late and then they miss behind the bird um so you know to fight the natural instinct of wanting to feel safe and comfortable by seeing the bird well when you pull the trigger um at least for you know uh, somebody at a high level of uh, of proficiency in the game that's what you're going to want to do. But it goes against all things that you do when you shoot well to pull the trigger when you don't see the bird that well. Right. Um, and so that that's why that pair is scary for a good shooter in a good position because you you just have to, you either have to trust it or you have to manipulate it in some other way, you know. Do you think that pair would have been as scary as you thought it was then if you would have had, let's say, an eight bird lead knowing if you dropped all of them you were still gonna win it well it was saturday well, let's just say it's sunday well then why would i care well that 
what I'm asking yeah. is if you miss all of them, you're tied. Yeah. If you hit just one, you win. Yeah. Is that pair as scary? I mean, at that point, the situation allows the pair to be. So it's situational, the pair. What's situational? The fear about it. Well, when birds don't matter, you know, there's no. I don't understand what you're asking. What I'm asking is, could you approach What I'm asking is the factor that allows you to shoot to win versus to shoot not to lose. Is that, do you think, situational? Do you think you could put yourself in a mindset to where you said, I don't care if I hit all eight. I don't care if I hit just one. As if the situation was you only had to hit one to win out of eight, which is, you would say, pretty easy. That's not a scary thing, right? You hit one target. Do you think that type of mindset is what plays into a factor there? Or do you think it's situational? Are you asking this for me? Or for people in general? I'm asking for David Radulovich. Whoa. Uh, well, for me, um, at this point in my game, I, I, like, there's no such thing as shooting not to lose. Okay, what about somebody who, just like in general, what advice would you give in that? From my experience teaching... Um, it's very, very rare for somebody to be able to shoot to win. Yeah, I would agree. I mean, literally, even when the birds actually don't count at all, like mm -hmm. even in practice, think about how many times in a lesson you have to you have to talk somebody down from valuing the bird so much that they can't make the right move because they're stuck wanting to see what happens or they care so much about the result. They can't allow themselves to miss by trying to focus on the on the me mechanics, you know, even on a bird that doesn't count. So, how do you think? Do you have? Do you have a time to where you can remember learning how to shoot to win? Was there something that happened? That it was not a learning process. What me. was it? It was like you flipped a switch, and it just happened. And I definitely remember it. What was it? It, it was uh, the world championship that I won. In Budapest? Yeah. It, it, was, it was just a mindset thing. Uh, it was just, tr just truly not caring about the result. Being so stuck in the present um, and so much enjoying everything that it, it was the first time I truly did not care about shooting i mean before i had won plenty of majors and i had won plenty of majors being in the lead knowing it going into sunday right and so i'm, I'm just good at shooting i never really you know shooting not to lose is not something that happens to me forever for a whole round um, maybe it creeps in here and there, but then you catch it and stop it with, if you have good enough self-awareness. Um, but I never got to the point where I, I was as free as I was when I was in Budapest, where, I mean, I, li I literally remember it was on, um, it was on the last day because it wasn't until, um, so the world championship in VTASC is four days. Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. There's 50, 50 birds you shoot each day. On Thursday, I was two behind the lead. I shot 24-24. A guy I was shooting with in my squad shot 25-25. The second day, um, that guy that shot 25-25, who was on my squad, shot 25-21, and I shot 25-23. Uh, so then we were both tied for the lead. Then after the third day on Saturday, I was now leading by two birds. So it was I went into Sunday for the first day being in the lead, and um, of the World Championship. And I, I remember for the the um, I I shot two twenty fours the last day, 
the 24 that I sh shot on my first round should have been a 25. I misread the menu thinking that it was a report pair when it was a true pair. And uh, I <laughs> bad talk, mistake. Of, talk about a bad time to do this. Um, but I, I called pull look, set up for a, a different bird um, and it came out. But I'm thinking that the other bird is going to come after I shoot this bird. So I shot the first bird and then went to look at the other bird and realized that it's already 40 yards out there going away. <laughs> so I took a, a, See ya. <laughs> a spray and pray shot at it and missed uh, and then ran the rest of the parkour out. Um, and so that was a 24. And then the set, and then the second uh, round that day, um, I missed my very first bird as a single. But it, to be fair, was a bird that I, I could have missed. Um, and I remember on that bird, I'm like, all right, look, I got 25 birds left to win a world championship. Never been in this position before. But at the end of the day, um, I, like I just told myself, I said, I am not go like, obviously I'm in the position with 25 birds left to win a world championship. I didn't get here by trying to protect that. I got here by trying to just go after it every day. So why in the world would I change my mindset or my plan right now? I just thought I was like, okay, I'm just going to keep doing me. I'm going to keep doing everything that I did to get me here because it got me here and I want to finish here. So I, I, I'm I, not going to allow um, anything to change. And if by making that choice, which I know it is the right choice, it causes me to lose because I do one of those eight birds to three birds choices where I go all out and it, and it forces me to to have a bad result at least i had that bad result by making the right choice so in my mind i was i was um at peace with the fact that um if i lose because i decided to play to win i don't really care uh and and so that's what allowed i mean uh, up until the very last shot but um you know i mean it happens in sports all the time. How many times do you see, like in an NFL game, when a team is winning by 21 points going into the second half, and they change their game plan to play prevent defense, mm -hmm. and they push their safeties all the way out just to try to stop the long throws, and then the teams just run up the middle, run up the middle, run up the middle, touchdown, and they keep doing it, and then it goes back to a three-point game. Yeah, I, you know? I notice that all the time. Because you watch so much football. Because <laughs> I know everything about football. <laughs> Yeah, but that's, you know. So your decision-making, do you think it gets easier and easier for you to make those decisions about playing to win? Like you see a target or a pair that scares you, you can have the easy, safe way out, or you can choose, you know, the eight, the, the way to shoot it where it'll get you eight targets or it might get you three targets. The more you choose that, does it get easier to do that? Hmm. The more I, t I know what you mean, I got to think about this. Um, no, I don't think so. I think, I well, first off, I think everybody's going to have a different answer to that question because I think everybody has a different value system for what they care about. Um, Does I, that choice, is that choice easier or harder depending on what's on the line for you? Mm. Making you think tonight. <laughs> uh. For me, that choice is easier to make when there's not a lot on the line. I know when the first half of the Olympic trials... I shot to win because I truly didn't care. I did not care. If I didn't make the team, I was over it. I was done. wasn't gonna. I wasn't even gonna go to the second half of the trials. Yeah. So I shot and I shot really good. I came out on first. Second half, I knew I was on top, and so the first half of the shoot, I was a little bit shooting not to lose. I didn't shoot great. Didn't shoot bad. I was just kind of right there in the middle, you know, that happy, happy medium round, and. I think it was the second to last day was when I was like, okay, I'm tired of this crap. I don't want to shoot, you know, not to lose. I want to keep gaining and shoot to win. 
and it, it took me a little bit to realize that. But what was hard was I could realize it on some rounds that I was doing it, but I didn't quite know how to correct it because for me, there was a lot of value on that shoot. To you, what changes when you shoot to lose? Or shoot, when you shoot not to <laughs> I don't lose. like to shoot to lose. <laughs> Ask that again. What changes that makes you shoot worse when you're shooting not to lose? Um, my mentality on it. N- yeah, but I mean... Changes... My mentality changes on it because when I shoot to try to protect a lead or to try to protect my score, then, like you said, I'm playing defense and I don't shoot, I don't allow myself to shoot to my full potential because I'm holding myself back, whether that be what I'm thinking about trying too hard to hit the target because you know shooting for a score putting a high value on a score whatever it is i don't allow my shoot myself to shoot to my potential because i'm holding myself back with with my mentality okay but what i meant was (laughs) what changes mechanically visually technically physically emotionally when you decide to shoot not to lose? I think uh, there's a lot of tension that comes into play, so... Physical tension. Yeah. Uh, Well, yes, physical tension caused by like a mental block on things because I'm putting a lot of pressure on myself. Um, So I think a lot of tension comes and and like I'm almost nervous. Like have you ever, have you ever shot... And not in a good way. Have you ever shot and and been so nervous on like your first couple stations that you're just like, oh my gosh, I've got to calm down. I'm just nervous, like almost like you're scared to hit the target. Have you ever been in that situation? Not a good nervous, not like I'm ready to go, excited nervous, but like, oh crap, like I've got to, I've got to shoot, right, I've got to shoot 25 freaking targets right now, and I have no idea how to how to use this gun. <laughs> have you ever been in that situation? Honestly, I don't think I have. That has happened to me countless times. Really? <laughs> I don't know why, but sometimes it happens. And I get up there and my heart's racing. I'm like, you know, hyperventilating, like I'm having trouble breathing. And like it takes me probably 10 shots to calm down. And, but those 10 shots, it's like 50 50. I mean, I'm going through the motions, but it's near impossible for me to execute what I need to do. I hit them, but at the same time, it's like just as easy could be a miss. Sometimes I do miss them, but... So... But that's what happens to me when I shoot not to lose. I get nervous. I get full of tension. My head's in a bad headspace. Why why do you not want to lose? It's whatever whatever value I've put on what I'm doing or what the shoot is or what that round is, whether that round is to okay, let's, make a final. Let's say that round is to make the Olympic team. Um, well, that, I mean, if I had, this only happens to me when something is unexpected. I have learned to adapt to that now, but in the previous years, if something was unexpected, like what do you mean by like, that? like if I'm at a World Cup and I've got the last round to go, and I kind of think that I'm out of making the final, and then going into the last round, a coach says, "Hey, if you shoot 22, 23, you're good chance of making the final." Something like that, and now I'm like, crap for whatever reason I'm like oh my gosh I can only miss two targets just to be safe let's just put one on it so then I've got all this pressure of like you can only make one mistake and I kind of go down that rabbit hole and then the first 10 15 shots 15 is a lot that's halfway through the round but first 10 shots it's a mess like I'm shooting fast quick not looking at the target I've got all this tension and real handsy just making terrible moves 
I don't even know if the gun's loaded. Like, <laughs> just... You've never been in a situation like that? No, I swear I have not. What? Yeah, I swear. You haven't shot long enough. I've shot just as long you as haven't you. been in the right situation then. There hasn't been, been in been every situation there. There can hasn't be. been something on the line to where you care enough to work yourself up like that. I've never felt like that. What? No, I've not. Am I the only one? I don't think so. I can't. I know you're one. not. I'm not the only one. But you gotta How can you how do you know how to fix those things if you've never been in it i just don't care yeah but you've haven't always not cared no i've always not cared that's not true yeah no yes it is listen i've known you since you were 12 okay i know that's not true there's been plenty of shoots where you've put a lot you've put pressure on yourself which one whether you've handled it in you know a different way but there's been shoots to where you would put pressure on yourself You can't say there's not a one shoot you haven't put pressure on yourself. If it's a shoot that I put pressure on myself. Oh, wait, there was one. What was it? I think. Mm. I think there's a difference between putting pressure on yourself and feeling the way that you're talking about. Well, that's just how you're reacting to the pressure. I mean, you could put, I've learned to be able to handle whatever type of pressure it is. I know how to deal with that now. But when you're 16, or at least when I was 16, and you're on Team USA, and they've shipped you over to freaking India to win a medal, and there's something that comes up and it's on the line, you know, that's that's a hard thing to deal with. It's a lot of pressure. And if you don't know how to deal with that pressure, that pressure can cause a lot of the things that I was just talking about. So let me ask you this, then again, uh, why do you, why do you, <clears throat> why do you care about losing? I think if you're if you're wanting an answer for when I was in that time, I cared about losing because I felt like shooting was kind of the the only I had put so much time so much money so much energy so much training into shooting that if I don't win what's the purpose of it you know that's kind of the mindset I had my parents had put a lot into it I was on a team I was on an open team the youngest you know a couple times traveling on an open team to all these different countries there's a lot of money being spent for me to be there there's a lot of pressure to handle and sometimes you don't always handle it the best so do you think that you were doing it because of you wanted to win or because you liked it because i liked what the game yeah um i think that fluctuated there's times where i truly you know enjoyed shooting and i shot really well and then there were shoots where i was like i want to win that thing you know, I think I had different motivations for different shoots. I can't tell you why or pinpoint one or the other, but... Well, I definitely have shoots I want to win. Mm-hmm. But if I don't, I don't feel like anything was wasted. I went through a dark time, I think. Like back in 2012, 2013-ish, that time. It was almost... I look back and it was good for me, but it was almost a time to where even in practice, if I could start off like shooting a round and even in practice, if I missed the third target out, I was just done. It's like, why are you even shooting? You suck. You know, I just had that type of mentality, which is terrible. And I see, I see kids sometimes go down that road and I look back and I'm like, wow, I was, I was that kid. I was there. But it, I say all that to, because my point was for a long time, I would go, I would bounce back and forth from shooting not to lose and shooting to win. And I could only tap in shooting to win a very few amount of times. It was something that was pretty rare for me to do. I would have spurts of it, like during a round, you know, I might have 
one round where I just smoked 25 and I was like, holy crap, where'd that come from? And then I might turn around and, sh- and shoot a 20 and I'm just like, all right, well, back to normal. You know, <laughs> just, just, I would, I would kind of hit it in spurts and didn't really know why it happened or yeah. understood why it happened. <clears throat> Being older now and you know, the wise lady that I am, <clears throat> I know now that all of that came from me putting pressure on myself because of how I valued that shoot or how I valued what was on the line from that shoot. So if I wanted whatever was on the line on that shoot, then I would shoot not to lose. Whereas, should have shot to win. So when you shoot to win, pretty much, probably win. Well. I mean, not all the time, but there's not pressure there. You're going to shoot a lot better than if you're tense and under pressure and do you think that there's no <clears throat> do you think that if you shoot to win there's no pressure no the, i don't i think that the you know pressure can always be there but i think that you're just more confident with it you know it's more of like okay like bring on the pressure i can handle it up uh, versus like mm, i don't want that pressure that scares me i don't want to do that <laughs> You if did, I could, but, but you, you're scared of it. So I asked you a question about what is different when you're shooting not to lose, like mechanically, emotionally, technically. For me, if I shoot not to lose, what's changing is like, you know, uh, theoretically, the way my mechanics work is that I would say, um. Five percent or less of the total shot from the time that I call pull until the time that I pull the trigger. Five, five percent or less on most shots. Five uh, percent of the time between that calling pull and pulling the trigger on most shots should be mounted. Five percent or less should be mounted. The ninety-five percent or slightly more is bringing the gun to my face. So like basically what I'm saying is by the time the gun touches my face, I'm pulling the trigger. If I do that correctly, my hands are in time with the bird, my body is in time with the bird, my posture is set correctly, my eyes are titrating visually correctly, my eyes have probably started in the right spots because that means I, my, my hands didn't start too quickly and get out of time, so I wasn't surprised visually. Um, there's all these things going on and the main thing is that the 95 plus percent of the shot is done and completed my favorite word proprioceptively oh gosh (laughs) and um but that's important to this because what it really means is that there's no conscious driving of the shot there's none. Zero percent. Zero percent is conscious, in terms of the placement of the gun, okay, and or the placement and the position of the gun. It's not done consciously, visually consciously, okay. Does that make sense to you? I'm not seeing the picture because I can't because it's not in my face. Okay. Okay. So it means my my mechanics are working good enough to where I do not put the gun in a place by looking at where the gun is to the bird. If I'm shooting not to lose, then that's slightly different. The time at which I'm in the gun in terms of the shot has gone from 5% now to probably it could be maybe 20%. So that means my hands are faster My my uh, in terms of mounting the gun. So I'm getting in the gun earlier. I'm able to see the picture more. I have higher levels of barrel awareness placing the gun more. That amps anxiety, which creates tension, lack of visual control. In terms of how well my eyes are titrating on the bird visually, I'm getting to my level of 100% detail probably at the time that I finish my mount, but I'm holding on to the shot an extra 15 to 20%. So what's happening is I'm trying to be safe. So you're basing yours off of mechanics. No, what I'm saying is if, if my mindset is is of the trying not to lose, 
then it influences my mechanics. Okay. If my mindset is that I'm shooting to win, that also influences my mechanics because it allows me to do what I want. in a positive way, yeah. Yeah, I would say actually it doesn't influence my mechanics. What it does is allows me to do what I plan. If I'm shooting not to lose, it it gets in the way of me doing what I planned. Yeah, agreed. Yeah, and so um, that's the mechanical thing that's happening that's wrong, um, and uh, you know that's going to influence shots. That's going to where it's really going to influence a shot. If you want to think about this, that that pair that I told you about the story with Wendell, right? Mm-hmm. True pair teals coming up, and I decided to shoot them on the way up, but there was some level of fear in the shot. Like I just explained, what what does fear do? It makes me get in the gun a little bit early before I want to call pull. If I'm shooting a bird below me going up, and the way that I shoot a teal is I stay above. The, the target the whole time my point of impact is above the bird the whole time if i'm shooting that low gun which i would and i'm pulling the trigger the moment that the gun touches my face i'm probably going to be able to see the bird over the gun for most of the shot because the gun is underneath my eyes unmounted even though the point of impact is above the bird it's going to look like the gun is under because my eyes are over the gun if that makes sense mm-hmm. right because i'm mounting the gun up and a purely based trusting move if i'm shooting to win would allow me to see the birds really well it'd be pull bang right pulling the trigger right when i'm finishing them out so in that respect there's not that much occlusion of the shot i'm not in the gun long enough to be able to not see the bird that well and then stop the gun because i can't see it well, if I get a little bit of fear in that, then when it influences my can- mechanics where I'm in the gun a little bit longer, I'm going to hold that shot more, which is going to occlude my dominant eye, which is going to make me slow down like the target passed me up so I could see it and I'll pull the trigger then and shoot behind it. So that's the mechanical explanation for how that made me miss that. But that's how it influences mechanics and stuff for me. You, for some someone like you, where every bird is coming from behind you, I mean, it's game over. Yeah, you're just out of luck. Yeah, I mean, where I, I said that wrong. Where every bird, you get beat every yeah. time. So, would you say what is the kind of key factor here to look for that a shooter could realize that they are shooting not to lose versus shooting to win? I would say if they care about losing. If they care about losing. What about a miss? What do you mean? If they care about a miss. Yeah, same. Care about a score? No. No? I mean, I understand where you're going with that, and I agree, but I... I, I I'm not talking about goals. Like, I'm not talking about, you know, it's good I'm to I'm not have talking goals. about that either. I mean, if I'm, they, like, set, set, like, you know, in sporting clays, you know, a 92 is what they want to shoot. You don't think that that can... Well, that's Cause bad. Them to shoot. I wouldn't do that. But I mean, that's I, what I, that's what I'm, that's what this is in reference to. Something like that, a score yeah. like that. Well, then no. I mean, if you're caring about, I mean, process or product. If you're product oriented, if you're caring about the product, you're shooting not to lose because you're focused on you're focused on the result. You're afraid. You're trying to protect a result. You're trying to protect and keep the number that you have. You know, a really good way to think about it is, you know, and I, I don't, I have, I have to be honest, I generally don't even think of it this way when I shoot, but it wouldn't make sense for me to. Um, but a lot of people, you know, they're halfway through the course and they, um, you know, they're, they're halfway through the course and you ask them how they're doing and they say, I'm, I'm, uh, uh, I'm at a 94. Yeah. Okay, well, it's like, well, if you want to be, if you want to be real about it, you're not at a 94. You're probably, if you're halfway through the course and you're at a 94, you're really at a 44. Yeah. Because <laughs> you've hit 44 targets. Right. So, um, you know, that's, a, in that in that perspective, you're adding, because you go to the next station and now you're at a 50, and then you go to the next station and now you're at a 58, and you go and then you're at a 56 and yeah. whatever. So, um that's an additive positive way of looking at what's going on 
Um, versus saying I'm at a 94 in the next station. Well, now I'm at a 90. 90. Yeah. So this would be interesting. How many times? I mean, because I would assume I know that that's the majority of answers. If you ask somebody what they're how they're shooting, they're gonna say, "Oh, well, I'm sitting on a 96," or yeah. I'm or like you know in my sport, oh, I'm sitting on a you know 50 for today. Got one more to go. Mm-hmm. What if? What if you change? You started to change just that conversation right there. Like if somebody, let me say it this way: sporting clay shooters. Somebody, wait, hold on. Sporting clay shooters are not good enough at math to add numbers. <laughs> well, but hold on. You ask. Let me ask you this: What's your first thought when you ask me how I'm shooting, and I say, "Well, I'm sitting on a 32." What's your first thought? What the hell? What is, is going on? What is happening? <laughs> yes. Is your barrels bent or what's right. going on? Right. You don't have that positive mindset. Like, oh, well, good for them. They're so you know they've hit 32 out of 38. Good yeah. job. Whatever it is. What if you started talking like that, thinking like that, like just started to shift your mind sh- mindset to a positive? Do you think it would be easier to start to shoot? I don't think that would do anything. I do. Yeah? Yeah. Why do you not? Your mind controls your body. If it's positive, it's less likely to have pressure. Negative. Well, I mean, if you change your whole mindset in perspective, yeah. Yeah, you got to start somewhere. You can't just say, all right, well, tomorrow I'm just going to change my mind. (laughs) Yeah, you can. (laughs) No, you can't. You absolutely can. It's a process. You have to train your brain just like you train anything else. Let me ask you something. You don't see those brain training camps? Let me ask you something. What are you thinking about right now? I'm thinking about brain training camps. Okay. I want you to think about... No, no. No. We're talking about making a change in your thinking, in your mind. Let me ask you this. Yeah. How how hard is it for you to do to multitask? It's impossible. Okay. So you can't just change that. If I said, David, I just want you to change how you think about things. I want you to think about four things at a time and remember to do them. Nobody can do that. Yeah, of course they can. Nobody can do I that. I do that. Well, I'm a multitasker. I can think about something. I can remember something else. I remember to text this person. I remember to, you know, mow the yard, whatever. Nobody can multitask. It's, yeah. a, it's a farce. Okay. Well, you know what I mean. <laughs> How yeah. hard would it be for, for you to do that? You would have to learn that process. You would have to rearrange how you thought, how your natural thoughts come in and say, oh, hold on, David. That's a difference between a personality trait and a mindset. Two different things. No. Yes. No. One is positive and negative. Mm-hmm. The other one is an innate trait of how you are. I think it's learned. Well, we'll let the we'll <laughs> let the psychologists talk about that. What I'm saying is, is if you're kind of stuck in a mindset of, well, crap, I'm down two. Well, now I'm down four. Or now I'm down eight. That's a kind of a negative mindset. But if you just change small things at a time, I think you're going to be a more positive person in shooting and it's going to be easier for you to shoot to win rather than shoot to lose or shoot to not, what did I say? (laughs) Shoot to not lose. What? If you disagree with this, you're wrong and I'm entitled to my opinion or my opinions that I'm right. (laughs) I just said that. You stole that from me. <laughs> okay, so I think someone could change their perspective on, they could absolutely. Yeah, but it would take time for them to actually look at something and be positive and not have to actually think about it and be a positive. I think the more self aware you are and the more grounded you are in, in, um, have you ever meditated? No. No? No. You should try. <laughs> Probably not. No, seriously. Because I'm a multitasker. I wouldn't be able to just... Listen, you want to talk about a, a, a profound level of experience uh, about conscious thought. I'm serious. You're looking at me like I'm weird, but I'm serious. I'm, li- it, I'm listening. 
it, it allows you to understand, you know, your conscious thoughts don't drive you. You can collect your conscious thoughts at any time and, and, and stop responding and reacting to them and instead understand what they are and make a choice. Right. But yes. that's a habit to push that aside. You have to make the change. You have to make the initiative to say, hold on, I'm not going to think that way. I'm going to change it. And then I would you have say, to create a habit for you before it becomes a change, which is what I'm talking about, about making small changes like your score, talking about your score in order to get to a more positive mindset. You just paid, I would agree. You just approved my point. I did? Yeah. <laughs> you know, I've noticed that you say that when we start arguing about things. <laughs> And you and I'm starting to think that <laughs> you have found a loophole in the system where when you say that I just proved your point, you just say it out of thin air, even if I don't, and then you say it in a way that makes me think that it's true, and I just no, let you this win. is just you catching up to the conversation. No, this is like a light bulb going off above your head, and you're like, oh, I get it. Uh -uh. <laughs> yeah. No, anyways, no, but I agree with you. The habit has to, the habit though is not, is not the change. The habit is the, the stop and the recognition of the fact that, okay, that's changed the way I'm thinking. Because at any moment in time, you can change the way you're thinking. The habit that you need to change is the fact that you realize you can change the way you're thinking. Exactly. Okay. And you can make little changes like that by little positive things that eventually turn into bigger things and bigger things and then soon enough you don't have to you know within respect stop and say oh hold on David I really don't like how I'm thinking here let me change that it your your brain will start to see the positive things so like you saying I'm sitting on a 96 well no I've actually hit 42 out of 45 right now or whatever it is you know, see what I'm saying? 42 out, out of 46. Well, I'm not saying the math math. I'm just saying. We all know I'm not the best in math. <laughs> Somehow you made 4-3. <laughs> well, see, I gained a bird. <laughs> Holy cow. But that's how I think, to wrap it all up, that's how I think shooting to lose versus shooting to win, the different mindsets, how they play into it. And I think in order to shoot to win, you have to, like you said, be self-aware enough to realize that you're shooting not to lose. Mm -hmm. I'm picking up what you're putting down. It's about time. It's a, a solid hour to get you there. No. <laughs> you are you're something else. <laughs> you got anything else to add to that? No, but you just proved my point. <laughs> <laughs> well, my opinion is is that I'm right and I'm entitled to my opinion. <laughs> Quit stealing that from me. I should have never said that. I never heard you once say it. Uh, yes, you did. <laughs> All right. Well, why don't we do this and we make this our first sub one hour podcast? Let's do it. I'm in. <laughs> uh, cool. Well, guys. If y'all are in... Uh, New York, Rochester, or anywhere else in the country slash world, head on down, up, or across to New York and come see us. Come shoot with us because we're going to be doing some interviews here too. So look forward to that. I'll be coaching here next week. Kaylee will As be will coaching I. here. Uh, yeah, Kaylee will be coaching here next week. I'm going to so make So if you it. actually want Here's some what I'm good do. coaching. Real quick. F uh, Never mind. I'm not going to say it on the podcast because if we can't, don't have time to do it, I don't want people confused. Uh, anyways, um, cool. Let's do this. For those of you that are listening to the podcast, go to your social media and I want you to share this episode on your social media and I want you to hashtag Beyond the Podium Podcast and I... And, before the hashtag, I want you to tell and explain just one time when you shot to lose. Or, I mean, shot not to lose. Yeah, or shot to win. Or shot to win. Yeah, if you can think of a shoot that, you know, maybe you were in a position 
something that we talked about to that tonight and you know you thought wow that's exactly me we want to hear about it yeah put a little story up we'll share them and uh, maybe we'll do something cool uh with everybody that did it we might might read them off and talk about them in another podcast or on the live we might could do a live. that'd be a great idea yeah, yeah. let's do that cool. cool so do that share this podcast episode hashtag beyond the podium podcast if you don't hashtag it we won't be able to see it because we'll search the hashtag so uh whether it be instagram uh facebook whatever just share it hashtag beyond the podium podcast write a little paragraph about uh one of those two scenarios and we'll read them off and live and talk about them as always guys we appreciate y'all listening to us we have a lot of fun doing this podcast and if you like it Give us a good rating on your favorite podcast app. Make sure you're subscribed to us and follow us, and uh, we'll see you next week. Thank you so much, guys. We will uh, see you soon. Like, see you next week. Awesome.